Welcome to Garden Valley Church Podcasts. We are so looking forward to having you join us today. Welcome back to Highway of Holiness. I'm your host, Audrey, and I have an amazing uh, woman of God here with me today. She is a guest, but not a guest to me. She is a good friend. Uh, We've been getting to know each other for a couple of years. Her name is Nikki Rogers, and I just absolutely love her family. The first time I met them, they just stole my heart. Um, her and her husband joined our marriage small group. This was a couple years ago, and they have now they have six children. And God has been at work in this family doing amazing things. And I've been wanting to have her come and share all that God has been doing. It's just amazing, powerful story of God's uh, power, his resurrection power, his healing power, uh, the holiness of God. I mean, it you guys are going to love this. So hold on, buckle up, grab a cup of coffee or drink of water, whatever whatever your favorite drink is, or if you're driving, uh, keep your hands on, <laughs> keep both hands on the steering wheel. But this is going to be a good story. And I, I, I uh, promise you, you're going to get your socks knocked off. And so I'm believing everybody's going to encounter God through her story. And so uh, I want to say hi. <laughs> so... Hi, my name is Nikki, like Audrey said, so um, just to get right to my story. Um, I guess it would kind of start back at the beginning of um, my parents divorcing and kind of my need for connection. Um, I was young, 11. So, um, th- you know, through that year or so of divorce was kind of hard for me. And then I, my parents kind of went their own ways and, um, I searched for connection. Like I said, so I, you know, started having sexual relationships and, um, and how old were you about here? So 12, 12. Wow. My first sexual relationship was 12. Wow. And that left me, um, Mm -hmm. the expectation of a sexual relationship in that young mind was definitely not what um, that was. And so it left me hurt and, um, damaged already. Yeah. And you think of your babies, you have kids that age. Yep. Cage is 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nikki and Josh have six beautiful children all the way from what, 18 to almost 18 to almost two. Yeah. Yeah. And so that kind of laid the foundation, I guess, and then started the domino. I mean, I I started using drugs at a super young age Mm -hmm. and then, you know, another sexual partner, another sexual partner. And then that leads me up to my husband. I met him at 15 and we had a very early sexual relationship where I got pregnant. And my mother was not supportive, was not interested in taking care of a child. You know, it was a struggle for her to take care of myself and my three-year-old brother at that time. So, you know, my child was pretty much out of the question for her. Um, Josh was kind of in limbo of, you know, what his support system was saying to him and Mm. all that. And so I pretty much was left alone. And wow forced to make a choice that, um, was not something that I really truly wanted. And so, um, you know, the choice of having an abortion at 15, um, which at this time it wasn't as common. So it wasn't as easy and accessible, right? Yeah. So as far as like the logistics to that, like Mm -hmm. I, I did, I did not set any of that up. So my mother obviously took care of that part. But I mean, I can visually remember like riding in the truck, we went all the way to Portland, Mm. um, and wow. have that done. And so, wow. I mean, I can see my footsteps walking into the clinic. And just on that note, mm-hmm. you know, it's very um, sterile. Mm-hmm. There's there's no counseling to it. There's no conversation. Mm-hmm. They take you back. You have an ultrasound. Wow. And I remember, you know, the screen is turned away from you. And in me, in my mind, I was like, this is the only chance I have to see my baby. And I, so wow. I asked the nurse if I could see, and she wow. was like, are you sure? And <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm positive. I want to see. And I saw, you know, my little baby and the head and the arms, and there was a baby there. And so that wow. was the only the wow. only image I thought I'd ever see mm-hmm. of my baby. Um, yeah. But God had but other God. plans <laughs> and, for me. So. Yeah. And we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Are you doing okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm already crying. So. <laughs> <laughs> for you. those of you who are listening and not watching, grab some tissues, yeah. or maybe you're not like me. I'm already crying. <laughs> I should have had tissues. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um. So, 
up in Portland. And basically what you're saying is, I mean, it's just like this cold medical yeah. procedure. They get you in, they get you out. I uh, They put you in like a community room, I guess you could mm-hmm. say. And there was another woman next to me. And she, I remember talking to her and actually holding her hand because we were both terrified. And she was in her 20s and married, but her husband didn't want a baby. Wow. And yet in life, they weren't prepared. They weren't ready. And so um, she had an abortion. And I, I remember she had blonde hair and I can see her face. And I, I don't know why, but I just always wow. held on to that maybe. Wow. But um, wow. yeah, we held hands and we talked and just wished each other like good luck. And then you go back and the first, they put you to sleep. And so you're, I was, a, well, not always, but for me, I was put to sleep. And mm-hmm. so I wasn't awake during the procedure, but you you wake up in the same room that you went to sleep in and they just quickly tell you to stand up, go put your clothes on and then you're out the door. So there's no support. There's nothing. I mean, it's just your number. You're in, you're out. That's it. Wow. Wow. And there was no aftercare either. Wow. I had no aftercare. I mean, wow. nobody checked on me. Nobody asked if I was okay. Oh. I didn't even, I wasn't even taken back to the doctor wow. to make sure that, you know, I was okay internally. Holy cow. And so I, you know, had my child ripped from me and then that was it for everybody around me. That was it. Wow. Yeah. yeah so that, I mean, there's the emotional side. And then for you, there was also the medical side. Yeah. Like, am I even okay? Is my body okay? And what, what is a normal follow-up plan and a normal care plan? You didn't even have that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. And so, and you obviously haven't even forgot it, you know, you'll probably never forget yeah. it. So you drive home from Portland and, um, Josh is, you know, he's young, but yeah. he's also not really in favor, but his, he's also being pushed by his family, right? Yeah. 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 They kind of planted in his head that, you know, that's maybe not your baby. You've not known her for very long, that kind of thing. And so he, he didn't want me to keep the baby either. Mm-hmm. And so the only support system I had was my mother and Josh, and they both did not want me to have wow. the baby. So, wow. yeah. so uh, it's important to know for the listeners how all of this has really surfaced because God is so faithful to heal us. The things that we keep in the dark, the things that we hide, even some of the hardest things. And I don't know how, but he uses them for his glory. Mm -hmm. He makes these painful places and brings them into the light and, and brings life to them and heals other people from them, from our stories. So it's so important to know kind of how Nikki got here. So about a year ago, tell us What happened like a year ago? So, you know, I, I've always believed in God. And so he was always, you know, on my, my, the back of my mind. So even though I didn't call on him throughout the years, he was always there. And so I, you know, saying that for years, even if I wasn't in church or completely faithful and, you know, reaching out to God, I, I knew that one day he would use it. And I had been told that, you know, by people, you know, God will use your story for his glory. And Mm -hmm. so I believed that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of held on to that. And um, so about a year ago, I just, I had a tug. I was like, I'm supposed to share this soon. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Josh about it. And he has always been supportive of share, you know, as in our adult life, uh, you know, share, share your story, babe, I'm here to support you. And so, um, you know, like I said, about a year ago, it just was tugging at my heart. And so my very first step was to write my story out. Mm -hmm. And that it wasn't something that I necessarily thought I would share, Mm -hmm. um, like word for word share, Mm -hmm. but um, it was healing to just write it out and just kind of like, almost relive it, Mm -hmm. but with a different heart. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so that was my first step really was writing it out. And then after I did that, I mean, I sobbed while I wrote it Mm -hmm. and um, I can picture myself writing it in my phone. Um, But like I said, it was really healing to write Mm -hmm. that out. And then I shared it. I was like, God was like, share it, share it with some people you trust Mm -hmm. and Audrey being one of them. (laughs) And so I shared it with a couple of people that I knew would lead me in the right direction and would give me words of encouragement yeah. um, and not judge me. Right. And so um, that, you know, that's what I did. I, I shared it that way. Wow. It's almost like the Lord was leading you and guiding you to also reconnect with the teenage girl that you had disconnected yeah. with. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, I feel like I for sure disconnected with that yeah. girl, like, because there was so much pain there that I I didn't want to know her, right? you know? And so, and that, that to me, that's false Mm -hmm. because at every stage of your life, you are who you are Mm -hmm. and what God has created you to be. And so, Mm -hmm. although our roads can be super hard, Mm -hmm. you don't have to have shame in that road. You can have glory in that road. And so, 
you know, and really that, that just came to me two months ago. Yeah. Where, you know, I finally, I was led through prayer with a woman at our church and she guided me in prayer of forgiving that girl, forgiving Nikki, the Nikki yeah. that wow. chose to have an abortion. Mm-hmm. And, um, so that at a women's event, we're at a yeah, women's event, yes. right? And it's something that I didn't even want to go to. Wow. I wasn't, you know, the past couple months before the, you know, so about four months ago, we were kind of in a tough spot and I didn't want to go. And wow. I was like, God was tugging at me, like, get up and go. Don't, <laughs> I was walking in alone. I, nobody was coming with me. Wow. Nobody invited me, that kind of thing. And so I, um, I, God was telling me, get up and go. And so I did, I got up and I went and wow, you know, a miracle wow. happened. Yeah. I mean, God met me, the Holy Spirit yeah. met me and, you know, freed me from something that I had carried for 19 years. Wow. And so, wow, I'm thankful that I went. Yeah. And what's powerful is the message. So um, Christy was sharing on Hannah. Yeah. I mean, it was like a total God setup. Yeah. Only God could set the, the whole thing up. I know. He tells you, you got to be there. Yeah. You're not really feeling it. And then the message is about Hannah. And I'm trying to kind of remember some of the pieces. Just that... Yeah, just staying in that waiting. Yeah. I think that was the hardest thing for me over all these years was I felt like I was, like God was forcing me to stay in this waiting period and I didn't understand. And like I wanted to break free, but I, you know, I was forced almost to just stay in this waiting period and yeah. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And yeah. that was with Hannah. Like she was, she was barren for yeah. what I can research and find 19, 19 years. years and she, but she kept wow. her, her faith in God and yeah. she kept praying to God and he delivered, but, yeah. um, so and tormented, yes, tormented, tormented because years. she couldn't have a yeah. baby by Penaniah, like yes. verbally abused, just like yeah. awful treatment. She was shamed. You know, yeah. Of course, in that time, that was a shameful thing. If your womb was barren, it was a shameful thing. You just, you know, weren't the the woman that like the next one, the one whose womb you weren't was, good enough. Yeah, you weren't good yeah. enough. And so uh, she just went through awful yeah. torment and taunting. The Bible says she was taunted by Penaniah and. And that's yeah. how I felt through all these years that I was tormented internally, mm, like in my right. own self, I was tormented because of the choice that I had made and that I wasn't worthy. And so all of these horrible things just have, you know, flooded my mind and really the, you know, perceptive of who I am and wow. who I thought I was, wow. you know? And so, yeah, that yeah. day, you know, Christy is preaching on this and she, at the end, you know, there's a call to come up for a prayer and I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, I don't want to, you know? And so wow. I wasn't going to get up. And she was like, you know, what she said, it was, what would God say about you if you got up? And I verbally, I stood up and I said, God would say I'm brave. Wow. And so I got up and <laughs> was set free. You know, I was wow. totally set free and able to forgive the teenager that was, you know, forced into a situation that was so traumatic. Wow. I love how God can move in a moment, in one moment, one word. Yeah changes our entire life. Yeah. I mean, you were set free from years, 19 years, yep, 19, 19 years. years. And you and Josh had, had your, just had your 19 year anniversary. Well, too. we've been together 19 years, okay. but our wedding anniversary anniversary was 16 years. So, Crazy. But we've been together, you know, um, as spouses or whatever for 19 years. Wow. Yeah. Everything's prophetic. I know. <laughs> and that's the thing too. Over the past that. two months, I know. Over the past two months, I feel like God is just like showing me because you, you yes. want to deny your, your flesh. You want to, mm-hmm. or you want to give into your flesh. Sorry. Mm-hmm. You want to deny what God's telling you to do because sometimes it hurts and yeah. sometimes it's scary. Yeah. And so I was like, not yet, not yet. You yeah. know, I've, over the past year, I've kind of told myself like God would show me when I was supposed to speak up. And, mm-hmm. Boy, has he. Yeah. Like, he really has. He's like, it's time. It's time to unwrap it. I'm shining a light on it. Now's the time. Yeah. So powerful. Mm -hmm. And so um, that day, you pretty much just got like, I mean, yes, you got rocked, but it's like chains were broken. Yeah. Chains were broken off of you that day. It was like... God gave you the keys. You walk out of shame. I mean, tell tell us more about some of the things you really believe that, you know, God set you free from that day. So... The so if there was a veil. It was almost like a veil. It was. I mean, it's, it may sound crazy to some, but it's like I saw brighter. Mm, it like I looked yeah. in the mirror and I honestly saw something different than I had been seeing for so long. 
it it was weird. Wow. I mean, only God can make yeah. you feel that way, but yeah. it, it, it was almost weird to me, yeah. you know, and then instantly, I mean, my husband was seeing mm-hmm. differences, um, in me and the way, like my actions mm-hmm. and everything. But, um, I hated myself. Mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely despised myself wow. for 19 years. Wow. And the, the weight of that is it's so hard. Yeah. So I'll pull my notes up and just kind of yeah. look at that. But, yeah. you know, the voice of the enemy can be strong mm-hmm. if we don't have our armor of God. Yeah. And so for me, I yeah. you know, I murdered my baby. That's one thing I would, you know, I would tell myself I'm a murderer. You know, yeah. I, I never felt deserving of being a mother. Wow. I have six living children. And what a blessing that is, yeah. you know, but I never felt deserving of that. Um, I felt disgusting. I mean, literal disgust for myself worthless, complete worthless, like unforgivable. Mm. You know, how could God forgive me because I killed his child? Wow. And so it's like the enemy was just, oh man, he was tormenting me. Yeah. The way Hannah was tormented, he tormented me for years. And the thing about it is I believed it. I would let it become reality. I mean, I had suicidal thoughts, Mm -hmm. which were very strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, weekly, daily, almost, I would envision myself committing suicide wow. because the torment that I had lived with for so long, it was almost unbearable. And so, I mean, this, you know, all that, you know, all that has gone, you know, from me at this point in my life, but it had a very strong hold on me for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so true. I mean, I think of John ten ten. the enemy comes to still kill and destroy, but Jesus came to give life and life abundant. Yes. And that is his, that's his MO. He's the father of lies. And we have to learn how to, I mean, here's like a little discipleship piece. Some of the listeners may already know this, but we do have to learn how to take captive those thoughts and yes. discern, okay, that's actually not true. This is a lie and, re- and take it out of our minds. Don't make agreements with it. And if you have already made agreement, it's really easy. You just practice this and you actually get better at it. You get better at discerning, oh, that's not a true, that's not a true yeah. statement. I'm not letting that co- one come in. I don't believe it. You're a liar. And you reject those thoughts that come into our mind. But a lot of us, if we don't practice that, you know, it's the renewal of our mind. Uh, Paul talks about this in Romans. I think it's Romans 12. Um, we will just kind of begin to be held captive up here in our head and believe all the, the it's like stinking thinking. I've heard it said that way, stinking thinking. And we, there's a battle up here in our mind. Yep. And so um, we have to wage war. We have to know the truth, the word of God. What does he say? Which you you discovered this. Yeah. So share share that part with us. Yeah. So that that torment in my mind, I, you know, I held on to that. And we don't have to, like you just said, mm-hmm. you know, that's not what God wants for us. And so yeah. yesterday I was kind of, you know, writing my notes and studying. And I was like, well, what does God say about us? And so... Just quickly, I mean, we are forever loved by yeah, God. We are healed. We are strong. We yeah. are forgiven. We are whole. Yes. We are His. He is with you. Always yes. He's with you. You yes. have hope in Christ. You have purpose. You're victorious. Yes. You are directed. You have peace. You have joy. You are worthy. <laughs> I mean, what else do we need? Yes. I mean, that is the Bible. That's not my opinion. That is God yes. speaking to us that yeah. we are all these things. And yeah. when we don't believe yeah. them, He is with us. And if we just open the Bible, yeah. if we just open our minds mm-hmm. to God, yeah. he will show us who we truly are. Mm-hmm. And like Audrey said, you practice it, mm-hmm. but you're able to be like, mm, no, I'm not going to let this mm-hmm. familiar spirit take over my mind. I'm going to cast it out because we are the head, not the tail. And yes. the enemy does not have control over us. We are victorious yes. because of Jesus. So, yes, you know, Preach. that's... The That's blood of my Jesus. heart. Yes, yes. The, blood of, the blood of Jesus has yeah. redeemed us. Yes. And we yes. are deserving, undeserving of him, but we do have him. Yeah. And so that's that's peace. That is so much peace for me. And wow. so that's what I'm practicing. That's what I'm, you know, staying steadfast in and I will not ever lay down again. Yeah. Is my peace and joy that I know that God has given me. So. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And not let him rob like any yes. more of your time or yes. your joy as a mother. Because mm-hmm. that was like the biggest area is like, uh, you're not, you're not not a good mother. You yeah. shouldn't be a mother, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Cause yeah. the shame was so thick yeah. that I didn't feel deserving because you look around in the world and there's women that can't have babies or, you know, miscarry and have a hard time. And it's like, I took one away. So mm-hmm. why do I deserve to have all these children? 
and it would eat at me. I mean, I shared with you before I came into church service and there was abortion pamphlets on the seats and I couldn't sit in my seat. Wow. I I couldn't stay in my seat because the shame was still so heavy and I was pregnant with our sixth child at that time. And so the shame was just so thick that I got up and left because I was just, I knew everybody in the sanctuary was staring at me and knew that I had Mm -hmm. an abortion, which obviously is not true. Right. That's what the enemy was telling me in my mind was. That's how you felt. Yeah. Yeah. Just the shame was so thick yeah. in that I just yeah. I ran. I wanted to run and just wow. like be out of sight. And you did right. You oh, left. I, I did. Well, I didn't leave church, but I left and went to a different room, and yeah. I finished watching church in a different room. But wow, I didn't come back into the sanctuary that day. Wow. And I have to speak to that because I tell you what, I'm so glad you shared this this piece because. I, I mean, I don't know where you're listening from, but here in Roseburg, 24,000 people, and I know this happens in other cities and towns too, every once in a while, we have picketers, or I don't know if they're picketers, but um, leaders, some of them are pastors out on our street corners. Have you seen them? With the big signs. Okay, yeah. They have the big signs of the fetus, mm-hmm. and they're, they're pro, I always get which one's confused, they're pro-life. Life. They're yeah. pro-life. Their heart is well. They they mean well. However, I'm not sure they have thought about how yeah. those photos on those pictures of these huge signs yeah. are impacting women. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that up because yeah. that didn't even come across my mind today. But do you know how many times that has made me ball? Ugh. And then my children will ask me, I mom, bet. what is that? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, please don't ask me because like, I'm over here, like in this shame ball. And these people are like holding these signs up of aborted fetuses, not yeah. just fetuses, but aborted. I mean, tore apart. Yeah. It, and so that, yeah. that, that always hurt me. It, it, and I am pro-life right. yeah. and that did not help me. That right. broke me. That made me yeah. so sad. It yeah. made me hide in my shame even more. You know, because when things would come up, I'm like, oh my gosh, that, you know, it's shame, it's shame, it's shame. And so I just packed it down and packed it down with a topping of shame, you know? And so yeah, those signs never have helped me. Yeah. So I think the lot, one of the last times, I think it was the last time, uh, these people, I don't know who they are. Uh, they were out on the corners, our main street, actually in Roseburg, two of our main roads. Cause it's, we're not a big town. I see them on Garden Valley. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Garden Valley and Stewart Parkway. I was so upset. Like something rose up in me, like this justice for women. And I was like, this is not okay. I was, and I was hurting at the same time because I just, I actually, (laughs) if I could do so, I wanted to like run out there and like hide all the signs, like stop it. This is, you're, you know, you're hurting women. And I, because I love women. I absolutely love women. So I just like my big mama heart, like was just, it's just Exploding. not the way. It's just not There's the so way. many other ways to help so this other topic ways. other than that. Yeah. Because really, you're just forcing somebody into shame or somebody yeah. like me that has gone through abortion and they see that. Yeah. It just makes you want to run. It doesn't totally. make you want to be like, yeah, like pro-life, no, you know, no abortion. No, yeah. <laughs> not at all. Right. You know, it's ugly. It's, you know, what it's abortion painful. is ugly, but I mean, I think there's always a way to go about it. And yeah. Yeah. It's just not it. Yeah. Totally. So I had made kind of a message, but I I really would love to just, I mean, like the advocate in me is like, okay, how can we get this to stop? Like, this is not okay. Do you see how this is impacting women? So I'm glad that you shared that. Um, So I love this scripture because this is also so true, especially what happened that day at the women's event. You stood up and said, I'm going to be brave. And also like in that prayer, I told her, I confessed to her, I had an abortion at 15 and that's what led to the prayer and my forgiveness and all that, Wow, which I was already forgiven, but you know, I was able to break those chains. And so, yeah, yeah, that, that prayer to me is it's big. Yeah. So first John nine or one nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purity and purify us from all unrighteousness, which is, I mean, it's so true and so powerful. I mean, truth is he already did it. Yes. But at that moment you were like, I'm receiving it. I'm yeah. confessing. I'm done. I'm, I'm sick of being sick with this like secret basically. Yep. And uh, you confess and you haven't been the same since. No. It's like amazing, powerful freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And then God has just led the pathway to even more healing. And I think confession is a big thing Mm -hmm. because if you find somebody, um, for me, 
I've confessed in you mm -hmm. or with you. And yeah. so when you find somebody that you can trust and believe mm -hmm. that their heart is with God and yeah. they have pure intentions for you yeah. in your life, um, confession can be powerful. Yeah. And it takes, I mean, healing comes in layers. So yes. it can take time. I was yes. thinking about times we, you know, we've sat and we've just, we've cried together. You've cried and I've cried with you. And it's just, yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't do it alone. You know, no. those who are having, are carrying this huge, maybe secret, um, and you've been holding it in. And there is freedom for you. There is, oh my goodness, freedom, power, forgiveness. You are forgiven, uh, but you can kind of walk out of, if I could say it this way, walk out of this prison of shame because it's God has given his life for you to walk out of this prison of shame and leave, live in freedom and wholeness and peace and that that weight. I bet you feel even differently. Yeah. Like even in the natural, I bet you feel different. Yeah. Yeah. It's It was a heavy weight. I mean, it, it affects all areas of your life, physically, mentally, all of it. And so, yeah, I definitely am like lighter and wow. just yeah. freer and there is more joy in me. And I just, I'm just not bound by something that was so heavy for me for so long. And suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't, you know, and I, I was laying in bed a couple of weeks after this had happened and the enemy was trying to come at me with these. And I was like, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you just can't, you're yeah. not going to break yeah. me down and you can yeah. fight. And honestly, yeah. the enemy is, was fighting to the day today. I mean, he doesn't want me to sit here. Yeah. He doesn't want me That's to open right. my voice. It's true. But, um, yeah, he will not hold me down. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Amen. Um, I did want to share some like statistical things. Yes, you go for it. Because I feel like, you know, an argument with abortion is, you know, uh, rape and incestual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a big one, a big it, argument. It's a big one. And so for me, one of the things that I have uh, to say about that is I don't believe the circumstances of conception value the or give the value to the life of that person. Mm -hmm. I'm mean, just the way you were conceived doesn't give you yeah. God's value. God yeah. gives you your value. And yeah. for the moment of conception, God had a plan for you. Yeah. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm on some support groups on Facebook for abortion. And so many times I see women talk about their circumstances. Mm -hmm. They don't have the money. They don't have the man. They to don't have the baby. Yeah, yeah. They don't have a car, you know, yeah. they give all these excuses of why they can't do it, mm -hmm. but a circumstance mm -hmm. should not put a value on a life. Yeah. So just because you're broke doesn't mean yeah. you should kill a whole life yeah. because we have six kids. You know, my husband and I started, I was 15 years old or 16 when we had our first child mm -hmm. and, um, we were broke. <laughs> we were yeah. broke and had no money. Yeah. And there's been so times, <laughs> yeah, there's been times, yeah. you know, through every child yeah. that the, the situation necessarily wasn't a great situation, yeah. but yeah, the the child's value mm -hmm. was not based on my situation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted to put that out there. And then yeah. also for the statistics, um, so there was a study that say that 73% of post-abortive women uh, acknowledge the pressure to have an abortion. 73% of wow. women that have an abortion acknowledge that they were pressured to have an abortion. Wow. So pressure, they were, their choice, the choice was made from other people's right. opinion right. of their life and their ability, but mm -hmm. we can't seek other people's opinion. We have to seek God, Come on, God's opinion. Come on. And so then also 28% um, aborted out of fear of losing their spouse. Mm. And that was me. I wow. had an abortion because my husband, well, my boyfriend at the time, but my now husband didn't want me to have the baby. My mother didn't want me to have the baby. Mm -hmm. So I, yes, my husband had to go through all these years of suffering with me mm -hmm. because that's the wife he had. But yeah, I went through all of this suffering and this torment alone. internally alone. Yeah. I mean, nobody was there for me after that. Yeah. You know? So yeah. why should 28% of women agree to an abortion and agree to lifelong torment because of, an, once again, an opinion of a yeah. spouse? I yeah. mean, let them go. Yeah. Let them go, you yeah. know? And then also the last one I have is... And it's also said, isn't there a saying like my body, my baby. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's use that the other way. My, it my, is, my choice. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. My body, my choice. Well, how about 
your body, your baby. Yeah. Like forget about the pressures and what other people are saying, your mom, your your spouse, your boyfriend, whoever it is, and your friends even. Or maybe yeah. it's a medical person or a teacher or someone standing in the gap. Maybe I'm speaking to some young women right now. Yeah. How about your body, your baby? Exactly. Let's think about that. And think about what the Lord says. Have you asked God? Yeah. Like that's, that's your ultimate guide, yeah, your yeah. ultimate comfort, your yeah. ultimate everything. Compass. Yeah. yeah. Compass. I yeah. mean, what does he say? And yeah. the Bible will tell you all day long what he says about that. Baby. Yeah. And babies are a gift from the Lord. Yes. Yes. And then the last one is 66% of women that have an abortion regret it. And wow. 66%. And mm-hmm. so. So over half. Over half of yep. women that have an abortion regret it. And so. You know, the proofs in the pudding. Yeah. And I wonder, did you look at all at ages? Like, I wonder what the percentage is of ages, like how old, like the larger groups. I wonder if most of them are teens or yeah. under 25, which if you add, sure that. if you add uh, stats and facts to a, a human, a, a young adult under the age of 25, we can't even decide uh, what car to drive, what job to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like we're so young and yet we're making these decisions. And again, proof's in the pudding. If over 60% of women that have abortions regret it, well, uh, this is something we need to be, we need to be thinking of. And, and how old are these young women maybe, you know, like yourself, basically Mm -hmm. like yourself. Yeah. So I'm not sure about the, the age from my, I guess, perspective on like my Facebook groups of young women, I would say in their early twenties are probably the majority of women that have abortion. But as I read through the posts on Facebook and stuff, they all regret it. They all live with self-hatred. They, they don't know how to get out of it. And you know, it's a lack of God right. in our nation. It's yeah. a lack of God that guides us. And then, yeah. you know, once you make these choices that are not fruitful, yeah, then you're stuck with you know, the ugly from yeah, it. And then yeah. if you don't have God or you're not, you know, totally relying on God, how do you ever get out of it? Right. You know, especially if you don't have a support group. Yeah. And it also makes me uh, more aware of if they're being, if most of them are being persuaded into it and then they have guilt from it. Okay. What are we doing as the body of Christ? Yeah. Because that means uh, we're not using our voice because it, that means there's that many more uh, people in the world or medical industry or whomever bringing the opposite agenda of God's agenda because God's agenda is always life. Yeah. And so we've got a louder community, a, maybe a larger and a louder community that's basically, if I could say it this way, speaking death. Yeah. And so what, what are we doing? What are we doing as a body of Christ? We, we've got to speak up and be louder and speaking truth and life and supporting, supporting these young girls that are mm-hmm. getting pregnant and not being supported to have the baby. Yeah. And I think that, that, you know, we should look in our own hearts, the people that are a body of Christ, because I read somewhere there was a statistic that showed like 50% of women would not go to somebody in their church out of shame. Wow. And so wow. You know, the people that sit in church, you know, what, what are you yeah. putting out? Yeah. Like, what does your heart look yeah. like to the people that are around you? Yeah. And I, you know, I would encourage women that are, are in church yeah. to try to find a way to help in this yeah. area because it's yeah. so big. It's so yeah. real. Yeah. And so, yeah, I know that grieves my heart. I can say yeah. I have heard of um, both mothers of teen girls who brought their daughter to church pregnant and either both of them or definitely the daughter just did not feel comfortable. Yeah. They, they felt ashamed. And, and so it, I mean, these are great conversations to have so that we can be even that much better at representing the father, representing God's grace and his mercy and his kindness, because, um, he paid the price for, for all sin, yeah. <laughs> all sin. And he is life and life abundant. And, and how can we be a better community and a better family that is speaking out truth and life and a safe place for these young, these young women. Yes. That's, that would be my heart is, and that's why I'm sharing Mm -hmm. is because, um, I want to be a safe place for 
young women, mm-hmm. for teens that either are pregnant or just really an advocate for, I mean, wait till marriage. <laughs> yeah. I know that it's yeah. like people are, it's just so like overrated and yeah. they're like, oh, you don't need to wait till marriage. But really, yes. I mean, if you wait until you're in a relationship mm-hmm. that is going to hopefully support a pregnancy yeah. in all the ways, yeah. then you may not be faced with yeah. this type of outcome. Yeah. So that's what I preach to yeah. my children. Yeah. You know, not that they Same. listen all the time, but yeah. I, yeah, for sure. I mean, that is plan A. That's number one. Yeah. Let's wait till you're married. Uh, when you're covenant, you're in covenant with a husband. Plus, it's it's a gift, and it's that yeah. much better to wait uh, for your spouse. Yeah. I wish I would have waited. Yeah. We didn't wait either. Me, me too. Yeah. You know, and because it, because of my the sexual road I took, it it led to build up to this too. Yeah. You know, it, there was shame in yeah. sexual activity before yeah. I even became pregnant. Yeah. And then, so yeah. it's, it's definitely not. The Especially for a woman, you know, we're, yeah. we're giving away a part of ourselves. We're mm-hmm. giving away our purity and it, it is different. It's a treasure as a woman, but society in the world doesn't say, see that or, or believe that. But in the kingdom, um, that is a treasure. Our purity is a treasure. It's a gift. And we want to wait and give it away to our spouse yeah. on that special day. It makes it that much better. Yeah, so. it does. It's better. And then you just have that connection and that tie with that one person. Yeah. And so that's powerful and yeah. important. Yeah, which I, is I a whole nother conversation yes. when we're giving our bodies to those we don't marry. We're attaching our bodies, yeah. our souls to those people. And that comes with a whole nother can of worms. Yes. And, <laughs> That's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's called Soul Ties. Yes. Yeah. And that's <laughs> that are real. very real. Yes. Very real. That us in our 30s and 40s have to, you know, many break. of us, yeah. 20s, 30s, that had to break and do everything backwards. So mm-hmm. maybe we're speaking to some young people yeah. today uh, to for do sure. it right, do it the right way and uh, the easy way because yes. life is It stressful. is the easy way. Yeah, it is the easy way. Life is stressful in and of itself. But when you add all these other things and these, you know, start getting into sexual partners and all the sexual things and opening up doors. Oh my goodness. Life gets complicated. It's unnecessary, unnecessary and messy and stressful. And before we know it, especially as women, we just want to be done with ourselves. Yeah. And self, you know, you talked about self-hatred and, mm-hmm. and uh, you yeah. know, that's bringing up kind of a thought for me is I can like intimacy. Intimacy is not just sexual activity. Mm-hmm. And so Right now, our son, Caleb, is 17 years old, and he has a girlfriend, and he was telling me the other day in the car about how he was sharing with his friend about how to be intimate outside of sexual relationship, (laughs) and I was like, I'm so proud, (laughs) but he, like, one thing his girlfriend likes is whenever they're going to get in the car for Caleb to chase her around the car, (laughs) and they're playing, they're being useful, they're playing, and Caleb intentionally does it because she likes it. That's cute. And so when you build a relationship out of or away from just sexual relationships, then it's so much deeper. It's so much better. And then even in myself, because I had sexual damage, I would say that there's times where I'm wanting intimacy. It's not actually necessarily sexual intimacy, but I'm wanting intimacy, but I will go towards sexual intimacy. And that's dangerous. I mean, we need intimacy way beyond that. Yeah. And so the heart, the heart connection, right. sorry. Yes. It's the, the heart, heart connection, connection. is yeah. so much bigger yeah. than just the sexual, which is obviously yeah. a wonderful part of marriage. But I mean, being connected with somebody on a totally different level is powerful and yeah. important. And yeah. It makes you, you find your worth, you know, and yes. And as a young woman, you want a man, a young man who values your heart above anything else. Yeah. Wants your heart and is going to pursue your heart. And I encourage you to make him pursue your heart. Yes. Don't give your body away without him first pursuing your heart. You want him to pursue your heart because at the end of the day, if you are going to say yes to this young man for the rest of your life, You want him to pursue your heart for the rest of your life. Yes. Not your body. Yep. And it only gets harder once you're married. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Because as a married, as married women, we know this journey. You, you still want your husband to pursue your heart more than your body. Yes. And the body part, the physical intimacy is just kind of the icing on the cake. Yes, exactly. But the heart to heart is, I mean, that is where true intimacy is at. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a few notes about the healing part that I want to share because I feel like this is kind of what helped me. So yeah, um, I would say the first step, if you have had an abortion, would just be repentance to God. Um, and then 
forgiving yourself, which you need God's help in that. I spent a lot of time not forgiving myself. Yeah. Um, so these are kind of my <laughs> do this faster to let to forgive yourself quicker <laughs> notes. Um, but forgiving yourself with God. Yeah. And then coming to God for true healing because there's really nothing else that's going to heal such a wound other than God. Yeah. And I mean, your husband, your mother, nobody can fix it. Yeah. You know, God has got to to heal up that wound. For sure. Um, and then healing doesn't mean that the pain or the damage didn't exist. It just means that you don't allow it to guide your life anymore. And so that was Good. big for me, you know, not allowing, because I did, I allowed my pain and my damage to to guide my mm -hmm. steps, and my control. life and control. Yeah. And when these thoughts would come in, I mean, I would just, I mean, there's times I couldn't get out of bed because I would allow these thoughts to take over me so much that I would just be paralyzed. I would just go into depression. Wow. And so it affected my parenting, the, my wife, my home, everything. Yeah. Wow. And so to um, the point of you were ready to leave one day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right before we got pregnant with Paige, I mean, Josh had moved out and we were, we were on the road to divorce and God said, no, you're not. <laughs> and gave us a baby. Yeah. And so, yeah, so we have Paige and, but then a true encounter with the Holy Spirit, I think is what will, I know is what heals you. Yeah. And so, you know, mm. finding that, that encounter, you can find that on your own, but also for me, like I had somebody help me mm -hmm. lead me through these prayers that really helped me to forgive and let go. Yeah. And I truly encountered the tangible feeling presence. and presence yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And yeah. so the shame is, will just eat you and you just, you have to get out of that shame mm -hmm. and you have to surrender to God mm -hmm. and yeah. you have to forgive the girl that made the choices at whatever age it was. You know, for me, I was just a teenager and I'm 34, almost 35 now. And so, um, and you, God gave you a vision or a dream of, of yourself of as myself. like a teenage girl, didn't he? Or did he just with kinda... the baby? So he showed me my baby. Okay. And so I had been praying that I wanted to see my baby mm -hmm. because I didn't know if I had a son or a daughter or, you know, what I, what I was pregnant with. And so that has always kind of bothered me. And so once I was stepping through these healing processes, I was praying that God would show me, show me my baby, show me my baby. And so I felt like, you know, spiritually God showed me that I had a daughter. He showed me a teenage girl with long brown hair wow. and brown eyes. Wow. And so, because I wanted to name my daughter, that's another step of the healing is writing your story. Good. I wrote a letter to my baby, Good. but I wanted to name my baby, but I wanted to name my baby gender specific. And yeah. so I, I wanted to know what she or he was. Yeah. And uh, God showed me it was, it was a daughter and also showed Josh that it was a daughter. And so separately, so that kind of confirmed for yeah. me, you know, and so, and then I was praying, you know, a week ago or so, and I was in my Bible and I tend to do that late at night. <laughs> and I'm like, I get in my weeping, praying yeah. and my connection with God. And, um, I was looking for a name for the baby. And I, a few days prior, like I'm searching, I'm like, God, I'm going to find this meaningful name. It's going to be like great and wonderful, <laughs> you know? And so, um, but I was, you know, a few days ahead, I was praying and I was actually reading about Hannah in the Bible in my Bible study. So it wasn't intentional. It was just put before me. And then it just, I, Hannah, that name stuck to me, Hannah. Yeah, yeah. And then it just was a full circle mm -hmm. of the day that I, you know, had the deliverance and my chains were broke. It, the story was Hannah. And then, um, wow, grace, God has given me, you know, undeniable grace. And yeah. so Hannah grace is the name that came to me. And then I realized, you know, cause it, this was over a period of a couple of days. These things just kept smacking. Yeah. Me I'm like, yeah. God, you're so good. Yeah, you're so so big. powerful. And I realized that, um, our midwife was Hannah grace. And then I realized that Paige, the baby that I didn't want Paige to be completely transparent. I wanted a divorce. I wow. had gone down this road with my husband for a very long time and I was tired mm -hmm. and that was not the answer, but that was the fleshly answer I wanted to give myself because I wanted to run mm -hmm. once again and hide mm -hmm. from this problem. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself pregnant with Paige in the middle of a separation. And I was like, seriously, God. Wow. <laughs> and so, but you know, I, I wanted her, mm -hmm. I, you know, I would never, never go down that road again. And so obviously I had my baby, but we named her Paige, Lily, Anne, but not Lily, Anne together, but Lily and then Anne. And so 
I then I realized Anne is in Hannah. And so that kind of was another full yeah. circle. And then my mother, her middle name is Anne. Oh my goodness. And so that was just a full circle because I have hurt with my mother and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so just God really just broke all the chains of the whole circle that I had been wow. going around and around in wow. and just was giving me all these confirmations and yeah. leading me and guiding me and just confirming yeah. and and it's so beautiful because your healing is healing your family, healing yes. your marriage. Oh, yeah. Just splash. It has poured over, over like yeah. a billion times over. It's just, it's truly remarkable the way God moves. Yeah. And when he moves, he moves. Yeah. <laughs> he moves big. I yeah. mean, my husband is, he's a different person. Wow. And that's, you know, to be noted, I mean, that's how strong this has had of a hold wow. on my entire family, not wow. just me or just my husband, but my marriage, my, wow. my, my, my parenting, all of it. I mean, wow. it's been so big and such wow. a stronghold on the whole, you know, the whole circle of my whole family. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I was just Amen. hearing that song. Yeah. Wow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. We almost could probably do like a part two. Yeah. It's yeah, it's good. It's yeah. hot. Yeah. So, um, well, do you have anything else to say before we pray? No, I don't think so. I think we, we got a good, good chunk what, of what would you there. say? Um, this just popped in my head. What would you say to any young, young ladies that are listening right now? And maybe, maybe they're facing that maybe they're pregnant, maybe they're pregnant and they're facing, you know, the choice, like what, what am I going to do? And maybe they're at a crossroads right now. Well, I would say that God has given you that child for a reason. And although it may seem not the perfect timing, it's God's timing. And that child was known before it was in your womb. Yeah. And God has such a great gift for that child, not just to the child, but to you. Yeah. And that the most selfless thing you can do is give your baby life. Yeah. And allow that child, that person Mm -hmm. to live the life that God has intended for them to live. Yeah. And there's resources. Yeah. Um, I would like to provide my email for anybody that would like to reach out for for comfort and peace. Um, are you able to put that kind of down or something? I'll have to ask Sean. I'm not sure if we can do that, but we'll see. Maybe on the screen or something. (laughs) Um, the, the ba- your baby's life has a purpose and you're strong and you're capable and you can do it. Yeah. And um, do you want to pray for women that have, maybe they have been holding this secret like you had for 19 years, yeah. you know, and do you want to, you want to pray for them? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. You go for it. So just heavenly father, we thank you so much for mm-hmm. your mercy and mm-hmm. your grace, your forgiveness. Um, we think we're so thankful that we can come to you with such heavy burdens and you wash them away, Lord. Yeah. I pray for any woman, teen, young, old, Mm -hmm. that is maybe hiding something so deep and dark Mm -hmm. that they feel like they're worthless. Yeah. I pray that they would see your worth, God, your worth in them, because what you say of them is so much bigger Mm -hmm. than what they say of themselves. Mm -hmm. So I pray that right now they would just feel your love and your compassion and your care for them that they would step into faith knowing that you're next to them. You are with them all of their life. Yeah. You will carry them through, Lord. And I just pray that they feel your presence, they feel your love, Mm -hmm. and you're just your forever peace that you have to offer, Lord. Yes, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're interested in checking out more of our podcasts as they come available, please download our app in your device's app store or check us out on your podcast platform at Garden Valley Church. We look forward to seeing you next time.